In August 2020, I took my 2016 Honda CB500X and I rode across the United States for the first time. I rode 7,929 miles in 24 days. There were good parts and bad parts, but I got out and I did the thing. Good morning, beautiful people. If you are new here, my name is Amanda Zitto. I normally make travel vlogs, how to's, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. And it's officially happening. We're on Flight of the Bag Pie. I left Portland, Oregon yesterday. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, Flight of the Meg Pie is a project that I've been working on for a little bit over a year to do an 8,000 mile loop of the United States because I've never seen the East Coast. <laughs> so I left Portland, I essentially hauled butt down the gorge. No issues this time, no helmet malfunctions. It was crazy hot yesterday when I stopped in Boardman. My phone said that it was 111 degrees in Boardman. That is insane. And it felt like it. <laughs> I stopped and had some ice cream and kept hauling butt. I thought that I was going to camp at a little campground that's just east of Dayton, but I found out that that was a state park, so that didn't work out. So I ended up riding um, out here to this spot in the dark, set up camp in the dark. It was nice not waking up like to my tent being a microwave this morning. Plan for the day is to pack up camp, hopefully in less than two hours this time, and head to the ranch uh, in Montana and pick up my brother because we're gonna go to the Badlands together. I'm dragging his butt to the Badlands. I'm very excited. Gary and I haven't gotten to go on an adventure together in quite a long time, and I don't think we have ever gotten to like do like a multi-day motorcycle trip together. So that's very exciting. I hope that you can hear the thunder. I had grand intentions of Gary and I leaving today for the Bedlands, but he needed to go to work this morning and I had a couple more things I need to take care of on the bike. Um, I want to readjust my shifter again. After I put the skid plate on while I was home, when I put the shifter back on, it isn't quite in the exact spot that I had it before. So I need to readjust my shifter, get that where it needs to be and it'll give me time to hang out with my dad, and I'm excited about that. It's always a good time. 
I know that this probably means I'm gonna be pushing it a little bit more when I get towards the end of the trip um, to make it back in time, but better to enjoy the things that I can enjoy than be in a rush the whole time. It's just not what I'm about. <laughs> okay, I think that it has stopped raining momentarily. So I'm gonna gather up my stuff, head up to the house so I can take care of some online stuff. <laughs> so I got up to the house and I had a bit of a surprise waiting for me. Uh, Wolfman sent me new bags to go on the bike to replace the Rolly and the old duffel that I have. So that's super exciting. So I'm taking everything out of the rollies that were on my engine guards and putting them in my new rollies and I'll stuff the new duffel bag. It's very exciting. I just want to say a huge thank you to Wolfman Luggage again for all of their support and just being incredible humans. I'm super stoked. BRS is now decked out in totally brand new 2020 Wolfman luggage. I'm super, super stoked. Now that's all done, we can take care of a few other things that need to be taken care of. Get my gear shifter adjusted and uh, make sure that my brother is ready for the trip coming up. Jeez, brother. My brother helped me fix my shock. I got that all adjusted. It's a little bit stiffer now. I'm gonna run with it the way that it is and see how it goes and got my gear shifter back where it needs to be. But while my brother was down there working on my shock, he uh, observed that my rear sprocket is uh, getting eaten up a little bit faster than I anticipated it. I had sent a new sprocket and chain to Milwaukee, but I'm not thinking that sprocket's gonna make it 1,500 miles, so. After a whole lot of calling around, I have found a dealership in Rapid City that can overnight the parts and we can get there on Saturday, get the new sprockets, get all that stuff installed and keep on trucking. Between that and uh, my brother and I had a little bit of a miscommunication, so he didn't get the time off to go anywhere until Friday. So I got here Tuesday night. It's been like two days that I didn't expect to be hanging out in Montana, but I'm not gonna complain any because that means I get to hang out with my parents and I love hanging out with my parents. Oh, it's always a good time. You just gotta roll with the punches. <laughs> Let it be known that I try to give my brother the duffel. He insists on bringing this giant camera bag with him. Uh, and it's not waterproof. <laughs> it had a rain cover. Mm hmm. What happened to the rain cover, brother? It's happening! We're officially leaving the Bitterroot Valley and we're on our way. Gary is gonna go to the Badlands with me. Dad is gonna go over the pass with us and then he'll come back home. But it's very exciting! <laughs>
We stopped in the Phillipsburg with the intention to have lunch and nothing was open. So we went to Anaconda, we had lunch there. Dad headed back to Corvallis and brother and I booked it all the way to Bozeman. While we were in Phillipsburg though, brother put his phone on his saddlebag and kind of destroyed his screen. <laughs> Don't, don't place your phone in precarious places. yesterday the day of lessons <laughs> I left Corvallis Montana yesterday I spent about two days in the valley before we took off again and I brought my lovely brother along with me this time he's gonna head to the Badlands with me and then he'll head back home but I'm stoked to get to bring my brother along with me we haven't gone camping together before so this is super exciting for me the reason we dubbed yesterday the day of lessons is because before we even left my mom cut her finger open with a hand blender. She went into town, she got stitches, she's fine. She told me that there isn't much pain now, so we're gonna believe that she's fine. Dad and Gary and I went over Skagahoe Pass. It was gorgeous. When we got into Bozeman, we headed up to my first choice of campsite, which was fully packed, which I should have known better. It was pretty close to Bozeman. And uh, Bozeman, in my mind, is like the Portland of Montana, and they have a beautiful backyard to play in. I convinced brother to trek up a gnarly road with me in twilight to try to find another campground and it was so worth it. It was gorgeous. Of course, I have no footage of actually seeing the mountains on our right end because the GoPro died. <laughs> Story of my life. Our last lesson of the day is um, if you are off-road and there is someone behind you, maybe signal something. If you're gonna slow down and turn, um, I may have cut in front of my brother like a terrible sister and he grabbed a big fistful of front brake and downed it right behind me and broke his windshield. And of course there's no documentation of that because it was dark and I was in a hurry to make sure that my brother was okay. So <laughs> I hope you guys can forgive me. We set up camp in the dark. We had some lovely zucchini and rice and this morning, brother and I are going to head into Bozeman. We're going to go check out the Museum of the Rockies because I miss it. And it was so awesome when I saw it the first time during the pilgrimage. So we're going to go check out that. We're going to hit a camera shop so we can get a couple more SD cards. And then we're going to hit the road. Hopefully we'll end up outside of Billings today, maybe a little bit farther. Fingers crossed. <laughs> sitting in the parking lot trying to figure out what we were gonna do for lunch a guy in the car next to us was like are you guys looking for pizza 
<laughs> and we're like, mm, yeah? He's like, you guys should go to the red tractor. It's awesome. I was like, okay. It was pretty good pizza. We left Bozeman like after two, it was like three o'clock I think when we left Bozeman. It was pretty late. We chose to hit the road at like the hottest part of the day and we felt it. It was atrociously hot. Um, we made it to Columbus and we decided to try to cut it short for the day, which didn't end up be working out in our favor. We got to Cooney State Park and it was just booked full. There was no camping available. So we hauled butt to Billings and as you can see by the white walls behind me, we are in a hotel room and we had red lobster for dinner, which was amazing. I'm white trash and I don't care. But we are going to call it for the night because we are exhausted and hope that there are better campsites in our future tomorrow. My brother and I are in the middle of eastern Montana, somewhere between Billings and Brodus. We are on our way to Devil's Tower this morning. We're uh, hoping to make it to Badlands by this afternoon. Fingers crossed. We left the hotel this morning. We stole as many snacks as we could from the breakfast buffet and hit the road good and early because my brother didn't have to wait two hours for me to pack up my camp. <laughs> It has been much more pleasant today, not nearly as hot as it was yesterday. So I'm a little grateful that we were able to grab that hotel room in Billings because having a nice shower this morning felt really good. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to find some lunch here pretty soon, but I am enjoying it not being like 100 degrees. <laughs> it's been a good day. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We hauled butt the rest of the day. We ended up in Rapid City pretty late, but we did manage to get 
my new sprocket and chain from Roscoe's. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to that shop. They went above and beyond trying to help me. This morning we woke up bright and early and got to the business of changing my chain and sprockets in the driveway of our campsite at a KOA. <laughs> Definitely not a place that I ever thought that I would, you know, be changing sprockets and a chain on my bike, but we did it. Yeah, it may have been time to change. <laughs> I want it to be known for the record that I did not ask you to do this. I'm weird. I like it. So shiny and so new. It's not Dan perfect, but it's close. Who's Dan? Dan is um, one of the mechanics that I used to work with at Latest, and I he was helping me do my oil change once, and um, he was following me around while I was doing it, make sure I did it right, and. I pulled stuff off and I wasn't cleaning as I went and he's like, nope, you gotta clean those parts. <laughs> if you take a bike apart and it isn't spotless when you put it back together, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I miss Dan. experience Deadwood today, which is essentially like Disneyland for me. That was amazing. Um, I'm already planning on going back. from Deadwood, we headed south and we hit Custer State Park to ride the Needles Highway, which was above and beyond expectations. And I'm sure I have more footage of tunnels than I have of anything else. <laughs>
from Custer State Park, we booked it to Rapid City and from Rapid City to Wall, South Dakota, where, as you can see from the background behind me, we have uh, found ourselves in a hotel again because Amanda was too lazy to put up her tent in the dark again. And because it's way easier to choose the more comfortable option when you're riding with somebody else. And Gary will be leaving me soon, so I'm fully taking advantage of um, having somebody else to blame for the fact that I'm in a hotel. <laughs> we need to get a little preview of the views that we will get to experience tomorrow in the National Park when we checked out the site that I had planned for us to camp at, um, which is obviously a very popular van life destination. I've learned nothing from the pilgrimage. I don't know how many of you have watched the like top five things that I learned from the pilgrimage, but one of those things is that if you want to eat food, not in the dark, that you need to find a campsite before seven. And it was after seven when we got to the designated campsite that I had found. So, <laughs> lessons have not been learned, obviously need to be relearned. So I'm working on that. <laughs> my last day I get to spend with my lovely brother before he heads back to the valley and I continue onwards to the East Coast. <laughs> When we rolled into Badlands, the ranger also warned us that they had a heat advisory for the day because it was supposed to get up to 104, and it did. And brother and I were not prepared. Specifically, we're, we were not prepared for the lack of shade at this national park. There were a couple places where they had obviously built shade structures, but we couldn't get in because of all the construction happening in the park that day. We did manage to find like a half-constructed concrete building halfway through the park and we stopped and I had to take a nap because I was definitely, I was feeling the effects of heat exhaustion really bad. I had two and a half liters of water and by the time that we got to that concrete shade shelter, I was just about out and my brother was totally out because he only had a liter and a half. A family walked by us after I had started to get up for my nap. The dad tried to make a joke and was like, yep, yeah, really hot, ain't it? And I was kind of snappy because obviously I wasn't feeling super great. Yeah. It's even hotter when you don't have air conditioning. And the mom came over to us and was like, do you need water? And she, when she came back from her car with the water, she told us a story about how she had been hiking in the Badlands the day before and totally ran out of water. And a stranger had given her a bottle of water. So she was just paying forward the karma. And she was amazing. And I don't know if she knows how much of a road angel she was for us that day. Brother and 
I are officially in Pierre, South Dakota. I have officially crossed the Missouri River, which may not sound like a big deal to you guys, but to me, it's a big deal. It was 104 today in the Badlands. It was pretty darn hot. We were definitely feeling the effects of heat exhaustion around 4 p.m. So it feels amazing to be in air conditioning. You can probably see a little bit on my face, even with sunscreen today, the heat was relentless. Okay, for now, we're gonna dump the rest of our stuff in the hotel room. We're gonna head to the Walmart, try to find a phone for brother, and then find some food try to finish up some photo editing for the night and then uh, in the morning brother and i will part ways i'm a little sad about it <laughs> i was thinking about us parting ways at the badlands uh visitor center and i was like i don't want you go <laughs> so this was our compromise um because we were both feeling the heat today so hotel room and then we'll be able to make a clean split in the morning um without all the sobby goodbyes that i probably would have done today <laughs> Perhaps one of the most white trash things I have ever done. Eating steamed uh, pasta and vegetables out of its container. Two dollar dinner. <laughs> This morning, we packed up our stuff and we parted ways at the gas station. I'm kind of sad about it. But brother is now on his way back to Montana and I am on the road again. currently somewhere in eastern South Dakota on a secondary highway. I'm not quite sure where exactly I am. My brother headed back west and I am still moving east. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of sad. I hope that he has a wonderful trip back to the Bitterroot Valley and my goals for the day is really just to get out of South Dakota. As if you have watched the rest of the videos in this series, you will know that I'm a little behind what I thought that I would be at this point, but that's totally fine. Um, I've been on the road for a whole week now. A little bit over a week now. Yeah, more than a week now. <laughs> My next major goal is to get to Milwaukee because I need to return the sprocket and chain that I had sent there back to Rosilla because I no longer need them because if you missed it, I had to change my sprocket and chain in Rapid City. Huge thank you to Roscoe's a Motorcycle and ATV in Rapid City for overnighting those parts for me. They were amazing and went above and beyond to help me. Um, they're super cool people. I also really want to get to Milwaukee because I want to meet up with a couple of my favorite people, Megan Stark and Whit Meza. Um, fingers crossed that I'm able to meet up with them and they're not too busy to see me <laughs> whenever I get there. Let's get back on the road, shall we? I stopped for a break here at the monument between South Dakota and Minnesota and I was kind of going over my plan for the rest of the day trying to figure out if there is some place between here and the Mississippi that I can set up my tent in the daylight. It is about five o'clock now and well all the spots that I had planned on camping are either way way far back or way way far forward farther than I'm going to get to 
in the daylight. So I've sat here and hemmed and hawed about it and I guess I'm going to get another hotel room for the night. The good thing is that hotel rooms in the Midwest are so much cheaper than they are where I've come from. So that's a good thing. I'm sorry about the bug noise. I don't even know what kind of bug it is, but they are so loud. So yeah, I guess I'm going, I'm aiming for Rochester, Minnesota, and I'll probably get there in the dark. Also just something that I've noticed, and maybe it's just me, but water in South Dakota has a very kind of salt, salty taste, like slightly salty. I don't know what it is, but that's what, that's what I think. <laughs> by the background behind me I did make it to my hotel room in Rochester last night just a little late it was only like 9 30 but it was definitely pitch black and it was definitely too dark to tell you guys that I made it to my hotel room the gentleman who runs the Rochester Inn was very kind and gave me a different hotel room than what I had booked so that I could park my bike right in front of my window which was lovely Nothing super exciting happened here last night. I stayed in, I made myself some dehydrated spaghetti and had that for dinner because seemingly everything closes at 10 p.m. in Rochester. No matter, that is why I keep the dehydrated meals in these kinds of situations. Not necessarily always these kinds of situations, but similar things. <laughs> the aim for the day is to get to Milwaukee, meet up with Megan Stark, and then I'll be going north a little bit and getting to stay with Whit Mesa, so I'm super excited about that. But for now, I need to haul butt and get to Milwaukee. Let's, let's, let's do the thing. You don't forget your first love. We were young and wild. We were up all night. You don't forget that summer sun, 2009. We're feeling high You guys, this body of water behind me, right there, that's the Mississippi. My mom pointed out when I talked to her on the phone when we were in Pier that the Missouri is one thing, but crossing the Mississippi is a whole other thing. And it's official, it's right there. I'm about to cross it. It's real. It's happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Once I got to Milwaukee, all I could think about was like how gorgeous the buildings were there. And I got to meet up with Megan Stark at her office, which was so awesome. Yeah. 
Megan gave me the mini tour of Milwaukee, which was super cool. We went and had bratwurst at a little food cart and her and her friend gave me a little ride around the town. And when I finally split from them and I headed north, I did get poured on on the way to her house in the dark. That was fun. <laughs> For the first time on this trip, it is raining and it's dark. <laughs> and I have to get to Whit Mays' house before I can stop. That is um, 68 miles away. It's fine. I will make it. I just need to zip up all my vents and put my rain gear under my jacket. It's an adventure. It's fine. Everything is fine. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to Wit Mesa for letting me stay at her house last night. She's a wonderful human. She rescued me from the rain. If you guys have not checked out her channel already, make sure that you go and do that. I will leave links down in the description because she's awesome. She did an iron butt that she totally documented and I watched the whole thing even though it was like 45 minutes or something. It was awesome though. It was great. You should watch it. Links, links, all the links. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> I left at Maze's house this morning and it was just dumping rain. It was dumping rain when I got to her house last night and it was just lovely getting to talk to her for a little while. Anyway, I am now on a side street in Chicago taking my pants off while other people watch <laughs> so that I can get the rain layers out of my pants because it is quite warm in Chicago. The rain actually stopped once I hit the Illinois border is very funny and I've just been sweating in my layers for the last hour. Oh. Uh, today's goal is to get to the Indiana Dunes and somewhere between there and Columbus, Ohio. Uh, that's the goal. Chicago is hot. Two people have already tried to hit me. Sounds about right. <laughs>
made it to Indiana Dunes State Park. I meant to go to the National Park, ended up the State Park, whatever. Same view. I've been going pretty nonstop since this morning. So I rode straight through to Chicago. The rain obviously didn't follow me to Chicago. So I stopped for a second, took the rain gear off, and kept going. So yeah, I've been riding for a solid like six and a half hours today. No wonder my shoulders hurt. <laughs> I didn't even realize that I had left Chicago because there was just like no gap in buildings. I thought that I was still in Chicago when I realized that I had crossed the Indiana border. I did call a bunch of campgrounds to see if they even had tent sites. Everything is booked up. Of course, because it's a Friday. Forgot about that. I'm tired. I don't think that I was quite prepared for how hard it was going to be to find a campsite on the East Coast. <laughs> Lesson learned. I know better now. Especially during all of this, everybody is getting out and about that normally wouldn't be out and about. So, I'm gonna head to the hotel and try to relax and stretch out my shoulder muscles because they are sore. <laughs> Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> you know when you ride too long between breaks and you can just feel your bones vibrating? That's what I feel like right now. <laughs> it was incredible get to ride with Megan Stark and get to like essentially talk pretty much all night with Whit Mesa. That was amazing. I will link their channels down in the description for you. You should definitely go check them out if you don't know who they are already. In the meantime, guys, I'm gonna finish up my dehydrated meal. Um, make sure that all of my devices are charging that can possibly be charging and hit the bed for the night because my body is so tired. <laughs> Today we are heading to Columbus, Ohio. Hopefully get to meet her two wheels. Maybe. <laughs> Should be a pretty short day because Columbus is only like 200 and some miles from here. And I've been averaging like between 300 and 400 miles since we left Rapid City. So definitely more mileage than I was doing on a daily basis on the pilgrimage. I think I average like 175 miles a day on the pilgrimage. So uh, definitely eating up a lot more on this trip than I did on that one. <laughs> anyway, let's get on the road. I made it to Ohio. Her two wheels is here. Jess is here. It's hey all so exciting. 
<laughs> I'm sure that you guys know her two wheels already, but if you do not, I will obviously link her channel down in the description. She is amazing. Thank you. She does what I do, but Anna, 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 is that fit, right? Yeah, that's yeah. my girl. Oh, the, look at it. It's so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea if any of this is in shot, but that's fine. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go find some food because I'm starving. Let's eat. Jess just bought me food and now she's gonna get me ice cream. <laughs> I might just live here now. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. If you do not recognize the background behind me, I am still at Her Two Wheels' place. I got here last night after riding through a million cornfields. <laughs> Today I'm gonna adjust my chain because it's getting a little loose and I think Jess is gonna ride with me for a little bit so that's super exciting. Oh look! <laughs> Good morning! Speak of the devil! <laughs> Where are you headed today? Um, I think I'm aiming for West Virginia, fingers crossed. Like the next campsite that I had marked on my map is like 300 and some miles away. Okay. So that seems like a good goal. Jess will actually be like the first person to ride with me on this trip besides my brother. So that's- Fun! Yeah. Yay! <laughs> it's a beautiful day. I like this weather right now is insane. Anyway, I've suckered Jess into making me breakfast. So I'm gonna go enjoy that. Look at those fries, though. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that coconut shrimp. <laughs> to ride down to I don't even know where town we're in in West Virginia this morning with her two wheels which was just super lovely and she treated me she made me breakfast and then she bought me lunch and I might just move in with her because she's bought me with food <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna go home now and I'm gonna continue on into West Virginia it feels so good to be eating up states right now that sounds funny but whatever I have goals to the camp at a campground tonight if I am gonna have a spot, that's a totally different story. Lord only knows, it's a national forest campground, so I'm hoping, since I will be back in the land of, of public lands, that I might actually manage to get a spot. We'll find out. <laughs> in the meantime, it's been so, so lovely getting to hang out with her two wheels. She's amazing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hosting me. I had so much fun. <laughs> you got me out of the state. <laughs> yes! <laughs>
the sun is going down, as you can probably see. And I uh, kind of wanted to set my tent up before the sun went totally down. I guess like the last 66 miles is a you know, small price to pay for a free campsite and getting to set up my tent before it's dark. <laughs> The last couple days hanging out with female motovloggers has been just like really cool. Speaking of cool, it is quite chilly here. I started heading up into the National Forest and the temperature dropped like 10 degrees. But then again, I'm always cold, so there's no surprise there. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a wonderful day in West Virginia. <laughs> I finally got to go camping again. And uh, West Virginia has welcomed me with a downpour. <laughs> mm, the best part of the situation is like all my rain gear was on the bike. <laughs> so I zipped all the vents in my jacket, put my waterproof boots on and ran out into the rain to go to the bathroom, ran to my bike uh, to get my rain gear out and stuff it into my tent. You can't do anything but laugh, like. <laughs> the inside of my tent is dry, so don't worry about that part. The great thing about this tent is that I can take down the inside while, I, while the shell stays up, so I'm gonna get everything that I can packed up inside so that at least part of my stuff stays dry, especially my sleeping bag. I don't want it to get wet because it's gonna take forever to dry. And then once I get everything in here packed up into some waterproof containers, uh, take the shell down and uh, except that I'm gonna be wet today. Oh, I guess my feet will be dry. My feet will be dry. Small favors. In the spirit of my channel. <laughs> After riding way, way, way too long, soaking wet in the rain, I made it to Staunton, Virginia. I believe that's where I am. I'll leave it in the lower third. I don't know what happened. My waterproof, the rain liner for my jacket and pants worked perfectly fine while I was in Wisconsin, but uh, they failed today. 
um, when I got here, everything, my chest was wet, my pants, like my like pants underneath my riding pants were soaking wet. Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful room though. It's a beautiful hotel. I think I'm just gonna take this opportunity to relax and um, take it as a sign of the universe that I need to stop for a minute and take care of my gear, get it cleaned up, dried out, chill for a minute. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that I have, I, I, I'm like this close to the East Coast, you guys. I'm so close. I can taste it. I, it hit me this morning. I looked at my map trying to figure out like where the closest town I could get signal in was and I zoomed out on the map and realized how far away I am from home right now. It's freaking crazy. <laughs> it's one thing to plan the trip and map out the map and all those kinds of things, but it's a whole other thing to actually be here. going to the coast it it's a little bit iffy outside but gosh darn it i will see the ocean it is going to happen but everything is fine everything's dried out none of my electronics were damaged so that is fine my tent did its job kept everything dry inside my tent first thing on my agenda today is to find an outdoor gear store a walmart something and find um a rain suit the radar says that the rainy part of this cloud should be gone by about nine so i think that i'm going to aim for leaving here at 9 30 so that i have at least a little window to get to the walmart and get rain gear before i have to head into the storm because of course it's moving in the same direction that i'm going Good news, I found rain gear. <laughs> the better news, it's the same color as my suit, which is super cool. The bad news, they only had double XL. So, it's gonna blow up like nobody's business on the freeway. But hey, it fits over in my backpack. I'm, I'm setting style points right here. <laughs> I will get up again. Stronger than I ever been. I will get up again. Stronger than I ever been. I can see everything clearer. Trying to fly because I'm light as a feather.
guys. Uh, I did it. <laughs> That's the Atlantic Ocean. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, walking in the sand in boots. <sighs> Not fun. I can't believe I did this. Well, there's officially seat water in my boots. <laughs> we have now seen the ocean. We have touched the ocean. The ocean is now in our boots. I need to eat something. Oh, oh my God, I can't believe I did this, you guys. Oh, I can't believe I did this. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I'm currently at the Wright Brothers Memorial because it was so close to where I stayed last night. So I'm gonna walk around here and then my next goal for today is to go to the Lost Colony site of Roanoke. I think that's what it is. And then from there, my next goal is Asheville so I can go see Carl because Carl recently moved clear across the United States with his wonderful fiance. And I want to see them again while I'm over here because I probably won't see him again for quite a while. And then I think from Asheville, the next place is Atlanta and then Colorado and then home. I have like, I only have about a week, a little bit over a week left of this trip. And <laughs> I need to do in eight days what it took me 11 to do. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful memorial, head over to the Roanoke colony site and then haul ass, essentially. <laughs> So I am at the Raleigh National Historic Site. For those of you who are not familiar with the story of the Lost Colony of Roanoke Island, I will give you the Spark Notes version. I will also link down in the description a couple of videos about the Roanoke Colony that could probably go into better detail than I can. But for the sake of this video, in 1584, Sir Walter Raleigh financed expeditions to Roanoke Island, North Carolina. There were three parties of colonists that set up shop here on the island. The first two colonies set up shop and then they went back to England. The third set of colonists was 117 men, women, and children to set up the city of Raleigh. And they were led by a man named John White. Well, John White went back to England to get supplies for the colonists. Well, thanks to England and Spain fighting a whole lot, uh, John White did not get back to his colonists until 1590, three years later, to find that there was nobody here. They were gone. Now, before John White left, they promised that if they were gonna go somewhere, they would leave it marked some someplace so that he would know where they went. So the only mark of, or hint of where these colonists went was uh, two words, crow towing and crow written into a tree. Now, if you're like me, you're like, well, they did it. They told you where they were going because there is an island about 50 miles south of here where the neighboring tribe of Croatoan people were. So I'm like, yeah, they told you where they were going. They went to the island 
and there have been excavations there like with colonist stuff that would have dated back to the 1580s so that you know you know that makes sense to me but the official story is that they were never seen or heard from again i've always thought this story was so fascinating so i wanted to come and see here i was kind of hoping a little bit that they would like have some like reconstructed ideas of what the settlers like little village would have looked like but there's not <laughs> anyway guys um i will definitely i'll leave links to articles and other videos that kind of go into more detail about the history of this site which i just think is super cool <laughs> amanda's shorthand account <laughs> of the city of raleigh <laughs> okay um i think we'll go, we'll go back to the bike and hit the road <laughs> Traveling through the south at night is so much more enjoyable. <laughs> Two, I am almost to Carl's house and I'm so excited. I think that I've done like 400 and something miles today. I'll put it on the screen here so that you can see it's been a long day. I've been on the road for quite a while. I'm very excited to get to his house. I'm excited to get to do laundry. Oh, I say hello to his puppies. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. I made it safe and sound to Carl and Lillian's house last night, and they stayed up with me, made me food, and oh, it was just so nice. Um, if you do not know who Carl is, he did the cabder with me, so I'll link that series above my head so you can just get a little refresher of who Carl is. They've just been so wonderful and welcomed me into their home, and oh my goodness, it was so nice to sleep on a real bed and not a hotel bed. And Lillian reminded me that Blue Ridge Parkway is very conveniently very close to their house. So I get to ride Blue Ridge Parkway today. I think I'm gonna go over so I can see the Great Smoky National Park, then back to the Blue Ridge Parkway and ride that to Atlanta. And I get to stay with Doodle tonight and I'm very excited about that too. Um, so this is just like worked out perfectly. There was a bit of fog this morning, but it has cleared out and it is gorgeous now. I'm very excited. I'm I'm glad that it, this has worked out and that I'm still gonna get to ride a part of the Blue Ridge Parkway. I was a little bummed earlier when I passed it, I passed the north entrance on the way to the Outer Banks. And as you probably heard me say already, I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do it because it was pouring and foggy and just gross. And I really wanted to enjoy it. So seeing the weather has opened up and is gorgeous and knowing that I have a beautiful ride ahead of me today and there's like barely 200 and some miles between me and Doodle's house. I also got a little clip of Carl getting ready for work this morning on his Triumph Scrambler because I don't know how many of you follow him on his social media and saw that he sold his Tiger and got the Triumph Scrambler 1200. <laughs> it's just, it's still kind of a trip to me to see him on the scrambler instead of his trusty old tiger. But his tiger also found a wonderful, good home. <sighs> and he loves his scrambler, so that's good. <laughs> a couple of my coworkers were able to take two of my shifts. Um, so I do have two extra days to get back to Portland. And in the grand scheme of things, two days doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it feels like a giant weight has been lifted off of my chest. Still on a crunch, but definitely, definitely relieved. <laughs> okay, pack up the bike, get on the road. 
I am on Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm on my way to the Smoky Mountain National Park. I am just so excited right now. It is a beautiful day. The temperature is amazing. Once I got out of that valley and up into the Smoky Mountains, <sighs> like this is, God, I've been missing this so much and I didn't realize how much I was missing being at a higher altitude in curvy mountain roads until until last night when I s kind of saw the silhouette of the hills in the dark on the way to Carl's house and I was just like thrilled. So this is amazing. Ugh. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. Doodle is getting ready for work. And <laughs> she was so nice. Like she bought me sushi and then she made me fried cheese. 
and she bought me frozen waffles for breakfast. I feel terribly spoiled. Thank you for letting me stay with you. I Aww. really appreciate it. Of course! I'm so glad you came! <laughs> I'm going to finish updating my journals and then pack up my stuff and uh, start the next leg to Colorado. Colorado is the next goal. I, think I have no idea where I'm going to be tonight, but that's fine. <laughs> Dude and I were just taking some photos and I put my phone on my tank and I went to move the bike and the phone fell off my tank. And you guys, I've dropped this phone so many times and nothing has ever happened to it because I have the Otterbox case on it. Well, it must have fell just right. Um, so it's finally cracked, but it still works, and that's what matters. <laughs> somewhere west of Atlanta, Georgia, and I stopped to eat, and I ended up at this place called Linda's Place, and I ordered some steak and gravy or whatever, and it came, and I was like, I am definitely in the South. But my favorite thing about being in the South is that I can get tea with sugar in it, and it's normal. <laughs> I think that's, that's my favorite part. I might be a little bit biased in one direction, but food was really good, and now I'm plum full. Oh, hoping to make it to Mississippi tonight, I think. I do have like two backup spots just in case I don't make it that far, but fingers crossed. Putting my last empty micro SD card in the GoPro. I'm gonna have to stop and get more micro SD cards. I marked it so all these ones are empty and all of these ones are full. And I've only filled up one big SD card, but all of these micro SD cards are full. 328 gigs and 164 gig. That's, that's just from the GoPro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, going through and editing all this footage is gonna be a hell of a process when I get back. <laughs> Made it to Alabama. I just saw this really pretty pond or whatever it is. It was very idyllic and I needed to stop and document it. stopped this little grocery store in Walnut, Mississippi. Across the state line. Three states today. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. <laughs> the thing that was kind of odd about this grocery store is that I went in to grab some vegetables for camp tonight and uh, everything was wrapped in plastic. Maybe that's a normal thing, I don't know. Uh, it's not normal where I come from, so <laughs> I was a little bit taken aback. So my first campground was definitely a bust. It is closed. I even went to go see if somebody else is also breaking the rules. There's nobody there and they've gated off the campground. So that sucks. The sun is already going down. So I think that I'm just gonna head towards Memphis and try to find a hotel, I guess. And then um, try to take advantage of that and uh, get out as early as I can. Cause I'm, I think I'm trying to do a thousand miles tomorrow. We'll see. I make no promises. <laughs> This is what $107 gets you at a Best Western in Mississippi. This is huge. This isn't even considered a suite, you guys. It makes me wonder like what the actual suite looks like. Whoa.
Um, I did buy groceries, so I'm still gonna make what I was gonna make for dinner. Save a little bit of money that way, but yeah. I'm not I'm not complaining. This is this is pretty darn nice. <laughs> Bit of a freak out yesterday. I was sitting in the bed at Doodle's house and uh, figuring out where I was gonna be at the end of the day and realized there is 3,000 miles between me and home. <laughs> it is Saturday. I need to be home by next Thursday. And when I first started planning this trip, I knew that it was going to be a lot. And I knew that in order to be able to take my time in other places, that there was going to be one day that I was going to have to haul ass. And today is that day. <laughs> I don't know how far I'm going to get. I don't want to say I'm going to do a thousand miles a day because I don't know if I can. My body is so tired. <laughs> We are in Olive Branch, Mississippi, right next to the Tennessee border, actually. We'll see how many miles I get to do today. I don't know how much of the, <laughs> I don't know how much talking to the camera I'll do today, but <laughs> Woo. it's about nine o'clock. Probably the earliest that I've gotten out of a hotel thus far on the trip. Let's do this. First time I've seen one of these at, the, at a gas station. Look, they have they've got disposable gloves for everybody. That's a that's a first for me. Officially 515 miles in. There's 560 miles between me and Colorado Springs. Not too shabby. I stole, I didn't steal. I took with me a couple of the buns from the steakhouse that I stopped and ate lunch at. <laughs> Maybe I should look up how many miles it is to the Colorado border. Maybe I could settle for the border. 
it did feel really good to go from like Mississippi to Tennessee to Arkansas to Oklahoma all in the span of one day. That was really cool. Granted, I literally just like cut the corner off Tennessee and didn't actually properly go into Tennessee. But also part of my brain is really excited to go through Texas. So I think Amarillo is like 240 miles from here. The cicadas are singing to me now. Maybe I should add a little bit more work to Amanda's load. Hey Amanda, why don't you put on the screen here how many miles I've done on the whole trip at this point. And that would put into context a little bit better why I'm so tired and not just because I've did 500 miles so far today. <laughs> I forgot to say, I can also now say that I have ridden on part of the historic Route 66. So that's cool. <laughs> it makes me think about Joe. If you do not know who Joe is, his channel is called The Great Egret. He has this whole series where he rode the whole of Route 66 on his Sportster, or his Iron 883. Yes. <laughs> I like the way that he talks about stuff, so. Thumb, stamp of approval. <laughs> Alrighty, after a little bit of uh, excitement uh, at an underpass where I finally ran out of gas. Moment of truth. What a good girl. Good girl. Thankfully, I carry a little bit of extra, so I got to this gas station, but there's only about 40-ish miles to the hotel in Amarillo. I think I'm just gonna do that. I mean, like, 700 miles in a day is nothing to scoff at, right? Good morning, beautiful people. I made it to Amarillo last night. About 733 miles yesterday, or something close to that. I can't say that this is the best hotel room that I've stayed in on this trip, but it was a bed, and I was tired. The goal today is Colorado Springs, like minimum, and my stretch goal is Denver. It's about 9 o'clock now, so I think I'm going to spend about an hour working on my journal, answering comments, and then pack everything up and try to get out of here by 10.30. Seems like a decent goal, right? Who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. I definitely don't know. I am in Texline, Texas, just about to cross the border into New Mexico. Gonna cut the corner off of New Mexico and get to Colorado. I'm so excited. Since I did so much night riding last night, I didn't really get to see the landscape change from the relatively lushness of Oklahoma to this like arid high desert kind of feel in Texas. It's very interesting. So I called Lisa and Eric of Wolfman Luggage and uh, checked in with them. I think we're going to get to do breakfast tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. And fingers crossed, everything goes well. I'm going to make it to Denver tonight. Get to see Cynthia again, of the, the fat nomad. If you don't want, haven't watched any of her content, I love her. She has this like wonderful, loud personality and she's just wonderful to talk to. So I'm very excited to see her again. I am pretty darn close to rolling over 30,000 miles on Briario, so that's very exciting. I should probably get off my butt and keep moving. Whew, New Mexico, here we come. The world is moving on. I'm still standing here. Searching for steady ground. Place to settle down. No reasons left to find. 
one day I'll change your mind And it won't come easy But I know it's worth the fight And I will run across the rivers Anywhere with you I won't give up I just rolled over 30,000 miles! <laughs> All mine. So cool. So cool. I follow you. I make the same mistakes. Forget how much it takes. No reasons left behind One day I'll make you mine And it won't come easy But I know it's worth the fight And I know you can see it too So keep me the thing. today I get to I got to meet Eric and Lisa of Wolf and Luggage and it's just been so awesome to get to talk to them and they're just incredible people they make amazing products that are very durable and just mm, they're my they're my favorite humans I'm not gonna lie <laughs> you know it's been great having Amanda as an ambassador riding around the US it's just it, it brings us such a joy to help people out and she's such a good person so we always like to help people like that um, so follow Amanda you know uh, enjoy and uh, you know, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. You know, it, it's what it's all about. Yeah. It's about the community and getting out and riding and so on. So. I'll, I'll give you a rundown real quick. Amanda's using the Blackhawk tank bag, the Rocky Mountain Expedition saddlebag. She has a small rolly bag as a crash bar bag, a large yeah. Expedition dry duffel, and then a pole bag, which she uses for her tripod. Yes. So all set up, yeah. kitted out and ready to go. This is like my favorite setup that I think I've ever put on the bike. Like it's worked so well for this trip. Okay, I'm gonna hit the road. I'm aiming to get to Utah today, fingers crossed. I wish that I could have spent more time with them, but uh, deadlines are deadlines. So having to like go back to work and stuff like a regular human being, like what is that? I don't know. Look at this, five star treatment. <laughs> I can't let people think that we let you go with a dirty uh, windshield here. I rolled into their house at like 10 p.m. last night. They were just super lovely humans. Thank you so much for hosting me. I really appreciate Very it. Very welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. And you're always invited to come back. <laughs> we got to go have breakfast with Eric and Lisa of Wolfman Luggage this morning, which was just amazing. Like getting to meet like 
it felt like getting to meet idols in, in real life. It felt so surreal. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple fires happening <laughs> in Colorado. There's one blocking I-70, which was the route that I was supposed to take through Colorado to Utah today, but that's all blocked up. So um, I think that we figured out a detour that may or may not work. I have no idea where I'm going to be tonight. What else is new? I'm, I'm on a mission to get home now. That's just the way that it is. <laughs> so fresh and so clean. Dear God, man. It was so nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you guys. I have no idea if you can hear me, but I'm too lazy to get my camera off of my bike. Uh, I just took a break here in Maybell, Colorado. Rode through the Rockies, rode through the smoke, back into the smoke again. Not nearly as bad as the smoke was when I was riding through the Rockies. That was like positively choking, but still pretty bad. Still leaving kind of like the burning sensation in the back of my throat. That's pleasant. So I've been downing as much water as I can and riding with my buff over my nose to try to reduce the amount of shit that I'm inhaling. Oh, okay. My goal is just really to get across the border into Utah and then find a place to sleep. Two days to get home. I can do it. We can do it. It'll be fine. Well guys, I made it to another hotel room. This time we're in Vernal, Utah. I finally crossed the border into Utah. Uh -huh, and I only did like 300 some miles a day. Um, about 900 to go to Portland. Getting closer all the time. Um, should be, I, I should be able to manage that in two days, no problem. We are on the, the very final stretch, you guys. I feel like I'm in a hurry right now to get home, but it also feels super contradictory to be in a hurry when I know how much I'm going to miss being on the road when I get back. So I feel like as a whole though, I've definitely done a whole lot better about capturing this trip than I was at the pilgrimage. Obviously there is always room for improvement and I hope that you guys have been enjoying watching this series thus far. I will say it once and I will say it again that if you ever 
are in doubt of the goodness in people, go for a solo motorcycle trip for a few days. The newsman just said that uh, they're recommending people not travel on any of the roads in northern Utah at all until after Wednesday. <sighs> Today's gonna be interesting. Good morning, beautiful people. It would be just my luck that um, in the process of trying to escape a storm in Denver, Colorado, I have hit the beginning of that storm in Utah. The news downstairs at breakfast was predicting 100 mile per hour winds across I-80 and several semi trucks have already been turned over. On top of that, Salt Lake City is gonna get snow and a lot of rain. So I think that I have uh, found an alternate route that's gonna take me across the middle of Utah. <laughs> It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Taking a small break. The sunshine has come out momentarily. I'm in Springfield, just south of Salt Lake City, and I was checking the wind report thing again, and it looks like it's gone down a bit. So I think I'm gonna take my chances with I-80 and see how it goes. We'll find out if I regret this later. <laughs> this is a good a day as any. To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my salt flats i will say that was probably like the tamest the wind has ever been on i-80 for me like ever i'm pretty sure when i crossed i-80 in 2016 on the pilgrimage the wind was so much worse than that so <laughs> counting my blessings that it was like nowhere near what like the news media and the people at the hotel that i was at this morning were trying to make it out to be i'm sure that it's much much worse in other sections of northern utah but there's about 700 miles between me and home right now, and I just want to be home. I don't know where I'm gonna end up tonight, but 
we'll find out together. <laughs> from Jackpot, Nevada. According to my phone, it is 38 degrees outside and it's 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Hopefully uh, the weather is as wrong about the temperatures today as it was about the wind yesterday. In theory, I don't, I don't think I have any passes to go over today. So hopefully I can avoid any snow or high elevations where it will get colder than what it's already predicted to be. Oh, I have 605 miles to do today. I'm doing my best to get it all done today so that I have a good whole day to recuperate before I have to go uh, to work and work an eight hour shift on Friday. So fingers crossed, I can get my butt all the way to Portland uh, before two o'clock in the morning. That would be, that would be nice. I'm extremely grateful that I have heat grips on the bike because uh, without those, I don't know how I would have gotten over all those passes in Utah that were snowing. <laughs> Okay, I'm just dragging my feet at this point. It's like 9.30, I need to get my butt on the road. Oh, here we go. Embrace the suck. Acting like there's no tomorrow. Acting like there's no tomorrow. Acting like there's no tomorrow Acting like this Acting like this Outside of Ontario, not Canada. <laughs> uh, a little bit, about about 380 miles to go. Thankfully, the sunshine has come out a little bit more. I was playing hopscotch with a trucker on the road, which was super fun. He honked at me. I don't know why, but anytime like I wave at a trucker and they wave and they honk, it just like makes my whole day so much better. <laughs> Pendleton, 211 miles to go. We're getting there, one little, one little bit at a time. One, one little bit at a time, it's happening. I 
I made it to the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have made it home from my 8,000 mile loop of the United States. More like 7,929 miles. I'll put the kilometers on the screen for all of my non-US folks. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to say that it was an amazing experience. I'm so stoked that I took the opportunity when I did to do this trip. I took the opportunity I was given and I did what I could with it. I didn't put it off until later when I would have more time or the circumstances would be more ideal. I did it now. So my motto is that you do what you can with the time that you have now. If it matters enough, you'll make it work with what you got. I also want to give a huge, huge thank you here to all of my patrons, everybody who donated on Ko-Fi, everybody who sent money uh, during the live streams leading up to the trip. This trip would not have been possible without all of your support and encouragement. Just thank you.